Death Touch is basically eight, basically a removal spell. All right, four color Kesis. This is the archetype that kind of took the MCQ by storm. Two of the 16 players that qualified for the next arena MCQ qualified playing this archetype. Basically what you're looking to do is with these diligent excavators, we're looking to mill ourselves a bunch. So we put a bunch of legendary stuff in our graveyard. So then Kesis along with Mox Amber is going to be able to cast a bunch of our spells over and over and over again, either eventually milling them out with Diligent Excavator or casting Othakaya again and again and again, dealing three points of damage to them every single time. This deck also gets to play Urza's Ruinous Blast as one -sided, a one-sided sweeper, because all of our stuff is legendary. So without further ado, let's dive on in. This deck was really sweet last time we played it. Interested in seeing how it goes again here. Obviously very powerful, but it has a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of little details that are easy to miss if you're not being careful. Does Veil of Summer stop Ashiok? Uh, it stops the targeting. It doesn't stop it from exiling their graveyard. Unless you're targeting them. Yeah, this is great. Looks like Bant Scape Shift. If I had to venture a guess, I'd assume this deck is okay against Bant Scape Shift. That's one of the reasons why it did well this past weekend. The amazing ace cashed in that prime support for the second month. Welcome back. Hope your Friday is treating you well. Thanks for the support. So we're looking for Kesis at this point. Is the is the droid we're looking for? Tamio potentially also very good, just because it uh, lets us pick a Kesis back up out of our graveyard that this excavator can, hope, can potentially put there at some point. We have this Urza's Ruinous Blast as a way to uh, clear zombies if they escape shift at sorcery speed. In fact, because we have the Ruinous Blast, we're gonna want to put a priority on taking this off the table. So that way we have the opportunity to remove their things before they attack with them. Defri. Defri Hero of Hearthstone here kind of makes their escape shifts like, um, gives their zombies haste in a, in a roundabout way. Because they do it at our end step and then untap and kill us with them. So again, when you're playing this deck, you want to be milling yourself for your Tamios and your Kesis activations later. That one off the table. So we're not going anywhere fast just yet, but once we find a Kesis, we can suddenly start doing a whole lot really quickly, especially if we, we mill over some Mox Ambers. Opponent currently just spinning their tires here. I assume we're going to see them crank their Blast Zone up to two. And like, the fact that we have this Ruinous Blast in our hand means even if they find Escape Shift, it's not really a big deal. Would have been slightly better to Kaya. Their Tefri was at two, Kindle Beer. Oh, that's awkward. All right, well, now I'm milling them because I want to draw this Kesis. I probably I probably should have played this build myself 
and then played the scry land before Hey, enjoy your camp out coming pizza. I thought I mentioned it. I definitely saw it. Maybe I saw it and then February. No, definitely didn't. You're right. Because you mentioned you mentioned it in the in the prime. I appreciate the continued support. Welcome back. This this isn't modern playable ramp, Chef Seth. Play Noble Hierarch. Gonna have to exile our one three chat. No, I mean they're definitely not conceding to the ruinous blast because like they have four fields of the dead in play, right? And then once we get Kesis down, we're gonna be able to we're gonna be able to recast this from our graveyard. So once upon a time when Hoglandia was a new stream, we didn't we didn't have sub only chat. And when we didn't have sub only chat. Our chat was very similar to lots of other non-sub only chats. And in that there were lots of people who either were not only just rude, but also just like spam random things and made lazy comments. And one of the things I tried to do to combat that was I required people to not just not be offensive in my chat, but to be constructive. And when people would post non-constructive messages, even if they weren't offensive, we would time them out. And there were a lot of people out there who their lives are so good and great that getting timed out in a Twitch chat was a great atrocity to them. We were we were being fascist and impeding on their right to free speech. And they, they went and made Reddit threads and cried to whoever would listen that their rights had been violated by getting being unable to talk in a Twitch chat for 10 minutes. So to make fun of those people, the subs started regularly asking for complimentary timeouts to be like, it's really not a big deal if you get timed out. No, having having the excavator in my graveyard is better later for uh for Lazev. So people today still regularly ask for timeouts to remember to remember a simpler time in Hoglandia. Yeah, no worries. It's fun. We have a whole culture here. It's weird. It's weird in a way. It's weird in a fun sort of way. <laughs> so I can double oath with the Kesis discount, but I kind of don't want to play the Kesis while there's a blast zone here. So I'm kind of hoping we can get them to pull the trigger on the blast zone. I don't know. Maybe that's wrong. Maybe I am just supposed to do this. I'm shooting their zombies. So I need to not die, Burgle, because I can't combo at this current point in time. Yeah, maybe I am just supposed to make them pull the trigger on blast zone.
pro tip mods, if you hold the alt button, the Twitch chat stops moving. I go to Kisa's plus Laz to copy it when it dies. Yeah, that that's true. But at that point, I just don't have any gas in my yard, right? So, like, what is the Kisa's doing? I think this deck's incredibly clunky overall, Ghost, Ghost Sandwich. So, I, I feel like decks that are able to efficiently get under it, the aggressive decks in the format, tend to have a leg up on it. I, I think like the the flash decks like Soltai and Green Blue Green are probably pretty reasonable here. So if this is a land I'm dead in two. Which they're pretty likely to have a land or something that gets a land. Is there a hotkey for the resolve all button? I don't think so. I think you just have to click on it. Wait, are they not blowing up Blast Zone? That seems so good for me. Hey, hey thanks for the seven months, Nathan. I appreciate the support. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Yeah, I agree. I agree, Black Sheep. And, like, one of the things I've always prided myself on that I feel like is one of the reasons why I have I was able to become as successful streaming as I have is um my ability to interact with chat. And, like, as the stream got bigger, if we weren't timing out messages that were clutter, I was just missing too many messages. So I was, like, worse at my job if we weren't moderating, basically. Uh, Ruinous Blast is in our bin. Oh. Oh. Oh, yeah, huh? Um. Yeah, I guess we're just casting that here, huh? So we just like buy Felicia the crap out of this board. I appreciate it, Fuller. I hate hearing quiches instead of Keith is. Uh, I think I just play this one. So, like, they can clear Ashiok with this, but I also drew another Keith is, so maybe that's fine. Yeah, I think I'm actually just going to play this and mill myself for four. Tefri, bounce Opal, play this. That, that was a much better line. That... That was a much better line. Tefri, bounce the opal, play the other thing is a sick line. Although I guess that line goes to crap if they blast zone me, huh? So again, just to be clear, if I didn't have this other Keithus in my hand, I would have uh, played the Laziv from my bin there. So that way I could have... Uh, what's the word I'm searching for? Had a backup in play, basically. And I'm by no means an expert with this deck. So if you see little things like what we're discussing, there's, well, like people have mentioned, there's a lot of sequencing choices with this archetype. So a ton, a ton of little things.
Came for the timeouts, the memes, stayed for the content. Hope your day's going well. We are having a wonderful day, pizza. Yeah, the last the last couple of days have kind of convinced me that taking a break from modern's a really good choice. Good. The what modern is as a format has been making me real annoyed in the morning. great that that was that was great they didn't they didn't have lands left to go get they didn't they didn't have lands left to go get we'd we'd ground through all of them For the, for the record, um, unless they unban things in Modern on Monday, I'm probably going to continue my break from the format. All right, so is this an Othakaya out matchup? I definitely want Ashiok. I'm pretty sure I want the third one of these. I'm pretty sure I want this. Actually, do I want Legion's End here? Yeah, yeah, we have Graft Digger's Cage. Graft Digger's Cage is a card that hates on this. Is Tefri Time Raveler a cut? Do I want Unmoored Ego? Maybe I don't want Ego. I feel like I, I should bring in some Jace if I'm cutting... I should bring in at least one Jace, I think, if I'm cutting Oath, because I want two win conditions at a minimum. Is this, this lets us win the game. Time Raveler prevents EOT scape shifts. That's true. That's true. He does prevent EOT scape shifts. I also have Ashiok though too. Hey Tom, hope you're enjoying. Uh, hope you're enjoying your vacation. I think this is right. Let's 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 submit before we before we time out and don't get to sideboard. Uh, I don't know, Burgle. I do because like the I feel like I have too many cards in my sideboard for the matchup. I feel like I have enough good cards even without the without the egos. And like you also hit an issue where like you have to ego them before they get field in play. So like if they already have a field down when you ego them, they're still gonna be making zombies anyways. So I think I'd rather have Legion's End and Ruinous Blast to, to reactively answer as opposed to trying to proactively take something away. Has there been any interest in Brawl? I am willing to bet that Brawl is going to be a best of one only format come fall. And I'm really not a huge fan of best of one. So my plan for the fall is to focus on standard to start and then start adding in some historic because... I do like this current format, and this format's basically going to be what Historic is to start. And then, if I find those those formats aren't really resonating with me or viewers, or I feel like we need a little bit more variety of that, then we can explore Brawl and still doing some Magic Online stuff. Have a good one, Jay. As always, remember you can catch everything, anything you miss on the YouTube channel later tonight. Yeah, there was uh, someone linked an article yesterday that talked about Historic being, uh, Historic having best of one and best of three cues in the fall. I don't have a link offhand, but... Someone did provide a link yesterday. It was in the July beta update. There you go. So I can Tamio and Ashiok this turn. Looking for Diligent Excavator to start milling myself. Oh, well now I can Excavator. Um, I think I'd rather Ashiok though. Yeah. 
Yeah, but like we have Jace versus Nexus, so I feel like I don't really need... Oh, you're talking about the Wilderness Reclamation, like the Nexus combo deck, right? Not just the card Nexus of Fate. I guess I could have tried like getting going there with the Moxie Emperors, but I feel we could try for it, but I feel like we're pretty unlikely to not fully go off. So I'd rather just wait a turn and be more likely to fully go off. Yeah, I, I agree, Violent Journey. I, I hope we slowly see more for more cards added like during low times. Uh, I have uh, I have a Just Kai Blade list that I would I would be happy to put together Pizza H for a normal legacy donation. We might just combo Burgle. Is this deck not reliable enough to play on the ladder? It definitely is if you know all the ins and outs. But this deck has a ton of moving pieces in it, and I I definitely don't know the ins and outs enough to play on the ladder. So again, we want to be milling ourselves here. So we're trying to fill our graveyard for the hidden hand. Do we have three moxes now? Yeah, we do. Do I want a Tamio? It's it's really great, Burgle. Histor Historic's gonna be a gas in the fall. There's there's a lot of neat decks like this in this format. So we wouldn't mind drawing another excavator. I think you will find my notes. Perfect. Yeah, I agree. The the salt side deck is definitely more resilient than the than the escape ship variation. The salt side Yarok deck that we've played. Alright. Alright, now we get to draw a bunch. You don't, this deck, this deck doesn't go infinite, Tom. So, Fate Piece, just as a, just as like a general note, I'd prefer if we didn't refer to decks in the children's card game as, as diseases that kill people in my chat. Please and thank you. Toxic is a good, is a good descriptor. Rancid is a good descriptor. Let's just, let's just avoid using the ones that kill people. There's also a lot of really meaningful ways you can interact with this deck. So I feel, I feel like it's really more than, more than fine. Uh, if opponent has Nexus of Fate, I have this Jace Wielder of Mysteries right here. I mean, my opponent is deterministically dead at this point. Like they can they can concede. Like they're they're not getting another turn. They've lost. Deterministic is an underused word. Listen, we're, oh yeah. Mocks me harder, daddy. Hey, thanks for the tip pizza, I appreciate it. All right, so then we do, so again, you have to reactivate Kesis every time you want to recast things that have gone to your graveyard after the fact. So in order to recast those three moxes that are already in our bin, 
we have to redo this, so let's go ahead and do that. There's 11 cards left in my deck. So casting two more Moxes and Jace will mill me out and then we'll activate Jace, which will win the game. Uh, without Lab Man Jace, you can mill your opponent out with the Excavators. You can also loop Oath of Kaya. Because you can just recast Oath of Kaya's again and again and again, dealing three damage every time. There, there is, this deck is a significant amount of clicking. That is definitely accurate. Self, self milling is also slower than the oath kill though. That's definitely true. Having to factor in my own stupidity when playing decks. <laughs> Listen, play to your strengths and weaknesses is all I'm gonna say. How we doing, folks? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, good night to everybody wherever you're at in the world. Thanks for dropping in here today. If you're a new viewer, my name is Jeff Hoagland. I stream magic full-time here on Twitch. I'm here 30, 40, sometimes even 50 hours a week. If you're someone who enjoys constructed magic, this is definitely the channel for you. We play a ton of different decks here, and we change decks every uh, 60 minutes to two hours. So always get a lot of variety in what we stream every day. As always, I'd love to give a shout out to my wonderful subscribers. I wouldn't be here getting in doubt without their support. So thanks to all of them for keeping me employed. I'd also like to plug a couple of my wonderful sponsors here really quick. The Nerd Rage Gaming Championship Series, a $5,000 cash tournament series that happens every single month in the Midwestern United States. If you can't make it up to the Midwest to play in one of their standard, modern, or legacy tournaments, you should check out their streaming coverage as well at twitch.tv forward slash NRG series. BCW Supply is the only ones I trust to protect my paper trading cards here. Using code Jeff10 at bcwsupplies.com, you can save 10% on sleeves, binders, deck box, and all sorts of other fantastic gaming accessories there with them. Cardsphere.com is a peer-to-peer -peer trading network that would love to help you turn your cards into other cards or with other players. There's no haggling, and they just take a 1% fee off the top. And, of course... Don't make your life garbage time. Join us in Hoaglandia today by subscribing to Jeff Hoagland with Twitch Prime today. And remember, if you are a new viewer who's enjoying the content, make sure you at the very least hit that follow button. Following the stream doesn't cost you anything. It'll let you know when I go live and with what. I'm generally live uh, weekdays during the day. I start about 7 a.m. Central Time, and I go till about uh, 2 p.m. Central Time. Also do other random miscellaneous and weekends as well, but... That's, uh, that's generally when you'll find me, Monday, Monday through Friday, 7 to 2. Yep, sign me up. I'd assume a big part of what makes this deck reasonable is the fact that the stat line on a lot of its creatures are very good, and Othakaya is just a constructed playable card. So I think just the, the high level of like, like one threes are pretty good in this current format. Three fours, also a decent stat line. Best stream advert on this platform. I appreciate that, Fall. Under the Oath. Speaking of Oaths, thanks for seven months. Welcome back. These lands are so beautiful. Wow, look at that. They're flexing. They've got the War Borderless and the M20 Borderless. Okay, I am kind of confused, though, because our opponent seems to have forgotten to sleeve their deck. You should always make sure to sleeve your deck, chat. If you don't sleeve your deck, you could end up with Declan, is all I'm saying. Yeah, the cost reduction on this is also very powerful. You could, you could end up with Declan. And just, just for the record, I'm not saying ending up with Declan is a bad thing because Declan's pretty great, but it is just a, just a statement of truth. This is my three, four. He writes, he writes with a quill. I had an appointment yesterday to solve that problem permanently. Noise. That's true. Jake, Jake is also an option. Um, this is actually a good draw because double oath here lets me kill Vana. 
And Vana, Vana is gonna was gonna ruin our day. Well, okay. Ruinous Blast sounds great. Legion's End sounds great. <laughs> Opponent has apparently experienced enough of this deck list to, to last a while. Hey, Cloud, thank you for the 18 months of support. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. So is this deck the new Bant Nexus Instant Concede? It is to a degree. One thing I would really like to point out, because I think it's important to point out when good things are done, just as it's important to complain when things that are done poorly. I actually think that this style of combo deck is the ideal style of combo deck to exist in standard. And the reason why I say that is because this is a combo deck where interacting with creatures is meaningful interaction. In my opinion, especially in standard, combo deck should be able to be interacted with via creature removal. Otherwise, just too many decks are going to be unable to interact. What GPU do I use? I have a 1080 GTX in my current computer. So I'm actually going to go ahead and play Ashiok on three here. And the reason why I'm prioritizing playing Ashiok as my three drop is because my opponent's deck plays Circuitous Root, which is a four mana ramp spell that searches their deck. You also note that I'm again milling myself here because I want to fill my graveyard up for Kisa's. I think you're supposed to take the hidden hand with your first ego. I think, I think this is the card you prioritize taking, mostly because even if they can't combo you, Kesis is still a good value card. So I wanna I wanna stop their value, basically. Is it crazy to just oath this? I think I'm just gonna oath this. Time for plan B. Kesis pieces. It's a good, it's a good name. Uh, this is our third match with this deck. We've been playing it for about half an hour. You know, Radeon option to run through parallels. You can run, um, Magic Arena runs very well about using Wine software, so you don't so you don't need to be, to, to fumble around with uh, with what's it called? So you don't need to fumble around with uh, parallels if you don't want to. All right, how many mocks and have we flipped over at this point? Yeah, so Parallels actually takes more resources. No, they said winter, Matt Man, so it's not guaranteed end of year. It could be next it could be next year still. So there's the difference between so wine actually stands for wine is not an emulator. So when you're running a piece of software through parallels. When you're running a piece of software through Parallels, you're actually emulating an entire operating system on your computer. Why do I need a God tier PC? I like my Overwatch to look nice when I play it. I don't, I don't stream real video games, but I play real video games on occasion.
Do I play at 1440p? I do. I would like a second Mox. Perfect. Third Mox. Sweet. Okay, third Mox probably means they're dead here. And they, they understand that third Mox probably means they're dead. Now, fair's fair, even under wine, heck, even under windows, Magic Arena is, it's, it's incredibly laggy. So just, just to like set your expectations, there's a memory leak in this application. And even on like my 1080 GT, Arena runs worse than Overwatch runs. Arena running windowed in, in 1080p. In 10, in 10, Arena running windowed in 1080 runs worse at certain points than Overwatch runs in 1440 on my computer. What's the best bet for Yorick Field to Ego with the deck? I think you're supposed to take Kesis first, and then what you take after that depends on what their board state looks like. Yeah, Hang of Sam's fine. Excavator into Laz sounds great. Got some scry lands to do some digging here. We have all of our colors. Watch these a small business, yep. Yeah, main main decking Jace seems fine. Jace is just like a good magic card too, so when you're not comboing, he just draws you an extra card every turn. Um I think I'm actually going to keep that. I think having one dedicated, one, one answer lined up to their, their first set of whatevers is good. I-9. What, um, as someone who hasn't kept up on processors, what's the hardware difference between an I-9 and an I-7? So, like, I've got, I've got an I-7, I think it's 87K in this. You do have a wonderful sub gifty icon, Marty. Also, Marty, I sent my Twitch rep a message um, telling them that they should make it so you don't need to gift a sub every month to keep that icon, because that's incredibly predatory. Is the is the i9, so the i9 has, has 16 virtual cores. Deputy's annoying. Ooh. We're gonna leave, we're gonna leave Kesis right there. That one, that one could stay right there. I haven't hit any Moxin yet, so. Brutal. Yeah, the eighty the eighty seven K is is good. I'm not I'm not looking to upgrade my processor anytime soon. I was just wondering from a technical perspective what the difference was.
so we're gonna start milling them at this point, right? Is the plan since my graveyard's going away anyways? I think I'm just aiming dilig diligent excavator here. Well, I haven't I haven't milled any moxin yet. That's pretty sick. All right, so I think I'm gonna eat this. Let Tamio go to one, and then. Will legions and the zombies? Yeah, I agree that I'm supposed to name Mox. Oh, you're saying I should have named Mox to see if I hit them? Because if I draw a couple, now nah, swing and swing and a miss, no harm, no fall. And then like next turn we're pretty we're kind of likely to go off. That's more like it. Cuz I can excavator Tefri bounce this deputy and then I can mill myself a number of cards to like try and find my mox here. It'd be sick if we went through this Ashiok. They're also like even if we don't go off this turn, I have another Legion's End and they're out of stuff, right? All right, so there's one Mox gone. One, one Mox is gone. All right, there's a Mox. There's another Mox. All right, there's two Ashiox. Are there still Excavators in my deck? Yeah, there's still two Excavators in my deck. So do I plus her naming Excavator then? Yeah, you think that's the plan? I can still draw one, right? Ho-ho! Papi! Nothing but net. Nothing but net. We are... We are low on... We are low on legends here. We are, we are low. There's only nine cards in my deck here. No, I don't. My Jace is gone. All right. I think we milled enough there that we're going to be okay, though. So I have one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Okay, and now, now we start targeting them. MTGO Juggalos, thank you very much for the very generous sub gifties. I appreciate that, welcome. 
Thanks for keeping me around. Yeah, the two Ashioks will help a ton. Is definitely the case. So we do this, and then we play Ashiok, and every every Ashiok mills them 10, right? Oh, that's true. I could wait to mill my last card. So I do this, and then each Mox is six, and Ashiok is ten. So they're yeah, they're we're we're good. We're good. This was this was a really impressive example of how you need to actually kill Keithus and keep it off the table. If they have a surprise Nexus, we have lost the game. We are not we are not beating a surprise nexus this game. Great, six guards. I question this outcome. All right, and then we just pass, right? Their deck's empty. I'm not I'm not missing anything, right? We could just pass and they lose. Ashiok does not exile Nexus for people who are aware. Ashiok does not exile Nexus. Nexus never enters the graveyard. Nexus is what we refer to in magic as a replacement effect. Didn't BM attack. Mistake. Fair. Harsh, but fair. Ugh. As appealing as it is to have all four of our colors, we just can't keep this hand. This doesn't really do anything past that. This hand's great. This hand's like really good. Like turn two, turn three, turn four. Get to bottom of Hollowed Fountain here. The mana base in this deck is a work of art. It's really well put together. Cast its spells really consistently. Loving this deck and enjoying the streams when I can catch them. Unfortunately, I have to get to work now, so if you have a great day, thanks for the support, Cold Havoc. Remember, this entire video set will end up on my YouTube channel this evening and my website, magicesports.net. You can check out the matches that you had to miss. Yes, Othagaya does not enable Nox, unfortunately. We're looking for excavators and mocks at this point. Probably don't want Othakai against turn one breeding pool. Watch them be playing blue green flash. Blue green flash is probably a bad matchup for this deck. Just drop Tefri on three. It's not that simple. Well, that 
mox is just as good in the graveyard as it is in our hand. It's arguably better in the graveyard, right? So, God bless. <laughs> Taking Yorok Field into a room of mid-range tonight. Yeah, that will be a good time. Oh, gosh. Are they playing Nexus? The Nexus matchup's probably bad for this deck, right? Yeah, we definitely want a Tamiyo on three now since we hit the Mox. And the Nexus matchup is just an arms race. It's bas it's basically modern. I could keep this here and then Jeffrey. I feel like that's not unreasonable. Yeah, we'll cast we'll cast Jeffrey and we'll bounce reclamation here. I'd probably ladder with this deck next time we play it. <clears throat> I feel like I've learned the ins and outs of it enough. Obviously still things we can. We can do better in some of these games, but I feel like feel like we've done enough here that uh, I would feel comfortable playing this on the ladder at this point. All right, so hopefully they just don't get another turn. So we're going to plus for Excavator one more time here. Hopefully find one of those. There hasn't been an Excavator in the top half of our deck, basically. Top third of our deck. Alright, that probably is lethal. Is there an amount of money to get me to play a Modern League? Yeah, of course. So, obviously, we cannot mill this opponent out. So the way, the way we win from here... Comes a copy of target creature in your graveyard. The way we win from here is milling... Um, the way we win from here is putting... 
Uh, what's it called? Is... Oh, I actually don't have that many things in my bin here, huh? That's awkward. I guess we're gonna- we're gonna fill the bin up very quickly here though, right? This is hardly my worst defeat. Yeah, we don't- I don't have a Jace in my main deck, so game one, we have to kill them with Othakaya. Yeah, we're- we're pretty likely to get them from here. Especially because I have Ashiok. Alright, so there's a lot of legendaries in our bin. Did we hit another mox yet? We did hit a third mox. And I should have plenty of, plenty easy time milling all the way through here. So we're gonna go ahead and activate this. Exile, Tamio, and Tefri. Now this lets us recast all this stuff. So we play mox, and we mill ourselves out, and we generate mana while doing this. That's white and black to kill them with Othakaias. Now, post board, we cut all the Othakaias in this matchup and we just bring in a couple of Jaces. You get to bring in a couple Unmoored Egos here too to take their Nexus away. Tamio seems fine. Ashiok's maybe fine. Maybe Elder Spell. Maybe Ashiok's not good enough. Is Ashiok the cut actually? What do we think? Ashiok versus Ruinous Blast. Discuss. Is playing this to kill. This cleans up ooze too. That's true. Ashiok helps us linear than better. The reason why we got going that game. Yeah, I think I'd rather have Ashiok and just like try and race. Yeah, let's just try and race. Thanks for the eight months of support, Great Bone Daddy. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Now, I think that's unnecessary, Niv. It seems great. All our colors. Excavator into last. Sign me up. Can you explain why Tishar is good with the Jace plan? What's the what's the reason for that? I was like, oh, I can Tamio here, but I can't because this isn't legendary. We got, we got there. I was like, uh, huh? I think I keep that there and then don't cast this and hope I get a turn, right? Because I was, I was going to double Laz this turn, but I, I, I really want to draw a Tefri. It's, uh, it's meaningful disruption here. 
So I should have I should have waited to play my land and played a tap land if I saw that on top. The two health probably doesn't matter though. I assume they're going to start, like, naming Nexus here because they want to start comboing off. Drawn from Dreams. Okay, sure. Hopefully we don't get Veiled next turn. Sure. So they still, they still can't interact at instant speed. So that's nice. Oh, you know what? I already had a diligent in my bin. I should have used my two mana to copy the excavator there, right? That's definitely what I should have done. In fact, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use the two mana to do that now this turn. So I've missed I've missed milling four because I didn't have this copy and excavator at the end of last turn, which is a big deal. Those are, someone asked why we're not playing this on the ladder, missing little things like that and giving up percentage points because of it. I'm not, I'm not used to, and it's, it is in my defense, it's harder to keep track of everything that's going on on zones that aren't visible. This deck, this deck would be much easier to play in paper. Just because in paper I could lay my graveyard out. Was that a good draw? What do we think, chat? Was that a good draw? I'm not gonna lie, doing this to a Nexus deck feels great. Let us have a storied battle worth retelling. I don't actually wanna draw any of the cards in my deck, right? I guess I name Mox. Wouldn't mind drawing a Mox. Yeah, they're they're dead, and I have th and I have Hero of Hearthstone in place. So they just can't do anything. Yeah, get out of here. This hand's not amazing, but I think it's in the realm of keepable. Looking for excavators, Keithis, Mox at this point. There's a mox. Bant stuff, eh? 
How does this deck win? You either mill your opponent out with Diligent Excavator, or if you can't mill them out because they have a copy of Nexus of Fate, you can also uh, win with Self Mill Jace. You can also cast Othakaya again and again and again. It's a variety, variety of ways to win. Oh, look at that. We have a mod command for it. A large, finite amount of mana. That's such a great, that's such a great command. Bless, bless up whoever made that one. That's excellent. Y'all are great. Look at this. They turned my Time Raveler into a divination chat. They turned they turned my Time Raveler into a divination. Div divination gain two. Busted. Tamio is a great pickup here. Because Tamio will allow me to start filling up my graveyard, which is what I need to do here. So Tefri dies, we go Kesis into Tamio next turn because this makes Tamio cheaper. So we're looking for excavators. Hashtag never lucky. That's fine. We get another look. We get some more looks next turn. Man, Keithis even blocks Nissa lands, which is great. Wow. Way to eat my 3-4. What did he ever do to you? Oh, he comboed you? I understand. Yes, you do not want to talk. Where are my excavators, chat? Golly. I just play another one? I was gonna play another one. Can I do it this turn? How many mocks are in here? There's two mocks in here. I can probably go this turn, huh? It's pretty unlikely with only one excavator. I have another Keithis in my hand. They're not gonna they're not gonna kill me next turn almost certainly. I don't I don't think there's a reason to try here. Can anyone give me a compelling reason to try? Because I can't think of one. Like the odds of them like nexusing and not giving me another turn are like astronomically low. To challenge yourself. Sure. And like, this means that they're not killing Tamio this turn. So next turn, next turn I get to plus her looking for Excavator again. Technically, you can Excavator on two, Keesus on three with Moxon. Yeah, yeah, this deck, this deck can kill on turn four. Anything that's not an excavator is going to the bottom. To the library. Wow, that's kind of a tilt. I'm really, I'm really glad we didn't try and go for it last turn. Animation is so good. Do I have all my mocks in here? I think I have all my mocks in here. Look, it looked a lot like all of my mocks. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Okay, so we haven't found excavators, but we found some mocks. 
And hey, look, there's an excavator. So, when this mox resolves, we'll have Laz copy an excavator. Yeah, I'm definitely going to put this deck up on the website. Definitely going to put this one up on the website. All right, so now I'm going to demonstrate the Othakaya win from here. We could probably mill them too, but there's an off chance there's Nexus of Fates in my opponent's deck. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the Oath win here because it's more conservative. Or they're going to concede. I'm messaging my graphics guy now asking for asking for a banner. Yeah, Sifko, Sifko is one of the people that worked on this deck. Yeah, Leyland of the Void kind of counters this deck until you consider that they just like Tefri Time Raveler bounce your Leyline and then combo kill you. Just like Graft Digger's Cage is good against this deck, then they Tefri Time Raveler bounce your Graft Digger's Cage and combo kill you. And then you consider other combo hate piece that's good against this deck, and they go Tefri Time Raveler bounce your combo hate piece kill you. Basically, what I'm saying is, can we please ban Tefri Time Raveler? Leave a couple of oaths in. I'm gonna bring in the Jaces. The extra Ruinous Blast seems good here. Um, gosh, actually, Tashar's probably nuts, huh? They probably don't have that much removal. Although, I guess they have Deputy of Detention. Yeah, I want to leave in some oaths to kill Deputy. Ashiok, we, we won through Ashiok earlier today, Tumos. We literally just got set up and then went off the same turn we filled our graveyard. So, no, Ashiok does not stop you a lot of the time. Oh, they have Hydras. Yeah, that's true. All right, let's board like this. I'm actually incredibly happy that this deck exists because this style of deck existing in Historic will get a lot of people to play Historic. This is this is the style of deck that a lot of people who are big fans of Modern will, will enjoy playing to get them into Historic. As someone, as someone who's interested in playing more historic and less modern in the fall, I'm really glad this deck exists. Yeah, this hand's actually really good if we hit a black source. But we do, we do need a black source with this hand. Yeah, Ashiok is something you have to work around, but you're definitely not just dead to it. Wow! Wow, how incredibly rude. Can you believe this opponent has the nerve to interact with us? What do they what do they think this is, chat? And here I was talking about how we were playing modern, and uh, my opponent had the nerve nerve to be interactive. The gall, yeah. Yeah, Legion's End is pretty decent. So we're looking for anything that's not a diligent excavator is going to go down here. That's true. Jeffrey doesn't work against that interaction. It's very true. Can't a man just play solitary in peace?
And again, that's one of the reasons why from a generic perspective, I think this is a healthy combo deck to have be one of the cornerstone combo decks in both historic and, and standard because there's graveyard hate that interacts with this deck. There's so many different angles of interaction. Can we win from here? No, not without an excavator, I don't think. We're getting Aether Gusted. I'm going to leave Tam Tam on top there. Yeah, Baffling Inc. creates a 3-3 when you get rid of it. This deck is also a great choice for Historic because most of the deck is Historic. Why play a Scryline there? Because it comes into play tapped. So obviously I didn't get value off the Scry. But I wanted to... Watsy called it historic because they knew about this deck. That's great. Do I want to buy back Oath this turn? I think, I think I just look for Excavator again here. When Watson released the new sets, do they have any idea the decks will come out of it? Yeah, so Wizards of the Coast has a, t a, uh, a team inside of their development that is called Play Design, who are all um, former professional Magic the Gathering players. And their, their job is to figure out what decks may or may not be good and help balance things that might become a problem. Wow, that's kind of unfortunate. We've not found another excavator. I guess I can just, like, play a Tamiyo. Yeah, we might be able to still get there this turn. Only time My will tell. Has been compromised. Oh, I missed a mana, right? I could have played, floated a mana, played this from my hand. I guess holding it... Holding it lets me mill two if I hit an excavator. Good lord. All right, all right. I, oh, let's go. I, oh, let's go. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. Do, 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 do. Beep, 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 beep. All right, so uh, I have Jace in my deck, right? So I probably want to make blue mana. Now I'm probably oathing at some point, actually. So let's make black. Let's do this. I'm looking for another excavator here, still, ideally. I don't have Ashiok in my deck at the moment. Let's slow this down. I haven't hit a Jace yet, right? Nope.
No, I don't, I didn't want to bounce my mocks because what I want to do here is I want to turn this into ex the excavator that I just milled over. And then I'm gonna bounce, um, I'm gonna bounce deputy of detention to get my keys back. Is my, is my plan. Non-interactive board since I mean to be fair so something that I think a lot of people don't consider when you're looking at the deck and you're talking about non-interactive is While this is a combo deck and again just to really drive home and highlight why I think this is an excellent healthy combo deck to have in the format This is a combo deck that you can interact with by killing creatures You can interact with it by in by kill taking rid of getting rid of their graveyard Different pieces of graveyard hit and while Tefri interacts with some of those that is back and forth to a degree right and like if you can keep this card and this card off the table they're not gonna get to do their thing decks like what we're beating up this deck really attacks what's genuinely a hole in the metagame in that there's been this mid-range dirtily ramp arms race of people just trying to ignore each other with like Bant Scape Shift decks and Bant Ramp decks that those decks aren't being interactive enough. They're not interactive and they're not fast enough to race this deck, which makes this a really excellent choice because they're not interacting with us enough and they're also not racing us. So this just gets to give them, give them the business. Yeah, when Baffling ends a good card against you, that's fairly healthy. Exact, completely agree. This is completely different and I know the actual combo turn takes a little bit of clicking through but if you understand how this deck works it's pretty easy to identify when they're when you're deterministically dead and past that there's so many more opportunity points to interact with this compared to Nexus of Fate and even Field of the Dead honestly has fewer interaction points than this deck does that I think this is not only a sweet and powerful deck but also a good one to have in the format. In Infect is a great comparison. So this is still almost card for card what the Sifka and Strasky and the other guys that worked on this played in the event. Honestly, the deck feels very, very reasonable. Yeah, so the way you actually win the game, just to wrap up one more time for people who came in late, you flip your deck into your graveyard and then you cast these Mox Ambers again and again and again. You have a couple ways you can win once you do that. So the Mox Ambers are either going to generate mana to let you loop Othakaya to deal three damage to your opponent a bunch, or Excavator can mill them out after you've milled yourself out, or you could have Jace Wielder of Mysteries post board in some matchups where that's good to um, win with his alt text after you plus one him. Basically, my rule of thumb for playing with Wielder of Mysteries has been if Oath of Kaya is not a playable card, bring in Jace and cut the Oaths has been my, my like approximate rule of thumb. But like if they're playing a deck where deal three damage or something is a good magic card, 